Philippians chapter 2 and verse 5 says, Our attitude should be the same as that which was in Christ Jesus, who being in the very nature God, did not consider equality with God as something to be grasped, but made himself nothing. He took the very nature of a servant, and being formed in human likeness and in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. The scripture says that therefore God has exalted Jesus to the highest place and he has given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow in heaven, on earth and under the earth. And every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is the Lord of all to the glory of God our Father. Amen. Let's sing the name of Jesus today over our circumstances.
Power is found in your name, Jesus. Healing is found in your name, Jesus. Deliverance is found in your name, Jesus. Salvation in your name. Healing in your name. Comfort in your name. Provision in your name. Special in your name. again to Church of Uganda Family TV and this is the Soul Moment program with me the Reverend Emmanuel Mwesigwa coming to you from Chambogo University I'm the chaplain at Kakumba Chapel and the Lord loves you all your all you first years who joined us this uh, semester welcome 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 I stopped making you stand up because the month of August ended already but I welcome you again and uh, soon we'll be in your hostels and in your lecture rooms preaching the gospel. Campus blazes around the corner. Don't you miss out? Come and let us blaze for the Lord. Uh, tonight we are continuing as we share on the topic alive to God in Christ Jesus. We took that theme for this whole week from Romans chapter 6 verse 11 where we are being called to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. There is a nice popular saying that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. As we talk about God's word today, today we are going to talk about God's word. I couldn't find an apple to come and show you that an apple a day keeps the doctor away. So uh, I came with a bullet chili. This is called bullet chili. It's a very huh, nice thing. If you don't know bullet chili, you better research it. Uh, my mother is uh, taking a bit of this more regularly because she needs some healing in her body. Uh, and it's a very good thing. It has uh, many uses, many uh, advantages. This bullet chili here, uh, it's good food. I've also come with uh, something which is close to an apple, but not exactly. Uh, this is a lemon. It's also a little bitter, uh, but it's a very good thing. And I only came with the food I could pick quickly from uh, the kitchen. And uh, I love my wife so much because she has this habit of giving me a fruit whenever I come back home. She loves giving me a fruit whether it is a lemon or an orange or an apple or a pineapple or something like that, she does it religiously. 
Uh, that girl called Pamela Mwesigwa is such a great wife to me. May God bless her. I will love her for all my life. Now, I've begun at an apple a day, keeps the doctor away. I've begun at fruit. I've begun at medicinal uh, fruit. Because when we talk about the word of God, the word of God is food for our souls. It is food that can bring healing, natural healing, long-lasting healing. It is wonderful bread of life. And so as I interest you more and more into the word of God, it is of great, great value. And let us now go straight to this famous passage in Matthew chapter 22, where Jesus is being put to the test. And as Jesus is being put to the test, I'm also going to give you a test. I gave this test to two congregations. Uh, one of the congregations that gave the test did not pass it. The other congregation tried and they passed it. After a few tries, I will see if you are able to pass it and get ready to type in your comment section, those who are watching on YouTube and those who are not watching on YouTube who are on TV, look for my phone number. Just put Emmanuel Mwesigwa phone number or Kakumba Chapa phone number and send me a text. I will send you mobile money of a gift. I gave away some some merit, some mobile money, some money to those who were able to pass this test. Of course, I'll only wait for one minute and see if you will send it, and then we can sort out the gift. But this is Matthew 22, and uh, we have Jesus under test. In verse number 35, Then one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question, testing him and saying, Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, friends, when Jesus says all the law and the prophets, what they had at that time was the Old Testament from the book of Genesis up to the book of Malachi. That's, where they, that's what they had for their scriptures at the time of Jesus. And when this lawyer asks Jesus, what is the greatest commandment? Jesus must take it from that body, from that uh, Genesis to Malachi. And the test I want to give you, be honest to yourself, send me a message or put it in the comment section with your phone number. There is a little gift that awaits you. Where did Jesus get this stuff from? Where was he quoting from? When he says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind... Where was Jesus quoting this from? In Genesis to, 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 to Malachi, where was he quoting from? Please feel free to answer me. Uh -huh. And then even the second greatest commandment, where Jesus says, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Where was Jesus getting this from? Uh -huh. Cameraman, do you know? Well, <laughs> let's sort out that after the recording. Where was Jesus getting this from? You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Now, I am intrigued by this first commandment, the greatest commandment, which says, with all your heart. Remember when we were earlier in an earlier episode, when we talked about um, seeking me, seeking God with all your heart. So the all comes again with all your soul, with all your mind. This God <laughs> seems to be a very jealous God. <laughs> he doesn't want any competitor. He wants to take it all. He is like a jealous boyfriend who will get annoyed when he sees the girlfriend talking to another guy. Oh, my goodness. Sometimes it's even a cousin. But because the boyfriend doesn't know, who is that? Who is that? But God will not tolerate any rivals. He says, love the Lord your God with all that you are. Now, those who are attempting the quiz, the test, you've already passed that test. 
or you've already failed, so I will now have to tell everyone where these matters are coming from. Jesus takes the greatest commandment from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse number 5, and this passage was called the Shema. Deuteronomy chapter 6 from verse 4 to 9 was called the Shema. And the Shema is a, a Hebrew word which means listen up. Listen up. It's the first word in that passage, verse 4 to 9. Here in my version it says, hear O Israel. So in Hebrew it would be Shema Ho Israel. Shema Ho Israel. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way. You shall also talk about them when you sit down in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, as if it's a watch on your hand. You shall make them frontless between your eyes and you shall write them on the doorposts of your houses and on your gates. That's how important the word of the Lord is. The word of the Lord. Teach these words diligently to your children. Put them on your hands instead of putting bangles which have funny, funny messages. Put the word of the Lord instead. Put them on, on doorposts of your houses. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. On the gate, don't just put, a friend of mine said, ah, yeah, 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 yeah. People, instead of putting the word of the Lord on their gates, they put umbuakali. Dangerous dogs, beware. Uh, scaring away people instead of preaching to them the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is very important, friends. Let us be in the habit of studying and ingesting the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord brings healing to our souls. Just like these fruit bring healing to our bodies. The word of the Lord brings healing to our souls. This is soul moment and I must prescribe to you the best for your soul. And that is the word of the Lord. The second commandment, the second greatest commandment, Jesus took it straight from Leviticus chapter 19, verse number 18, where we read this. You shall not take vengeance, nor bear any grudge against the children of your people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. So, studying God's word Looking up here, there, and everywhere and ensuring that we know what the word of God says is very important if we are to remain alive to God in Christ Jesus. There is no way to remain alive to God unless we feed on the right thing. Those who do not feed right will soon die. If you want to remain alive to God in Christ Jesus, then feed right on his word. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, that it will energize you day after day to be dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your goodness and loving kindness and for the provision of your holy word to refresh us, to nourish us, to keep us alive and help us to grow ever more appetite for your word, to study your word, to ingest it, that it will continually mortify and kill every appetite to sin and keep us alive to you, that we may be alive to the needs of the world, your needs through the needs of the world, and we may continually serve you all the days of our lives. This we pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and amen. May God richly bless you.